Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel and to my reactions to Doctor Who. Last time we have seen the first episode and this time we are going to see the second episode of the first season and I'm really excited to get into it. Before we start with the episode though, I have two things that I want to point out. Um, I have written them down. The first one is I have ordered a new camera because I have seen when I edited the first one that the HD resolution that my camera is promising, it's not there. And with it's not there, I mean, it's the, the picture is so bad that I really, I mean, you can see it right now. I have changed some settings, but I just in the pre-recording screen over here, it doesn't seem very nice. So I have ordered a new one and it's going to arrive in some days. So I think the third episode will be um, recorded with the new camera. Second topic today is Patreon. I tried to set up an account for free because I wanted you guys to watch full length reactions that I upload on there. But it seems like it's not possible on Patreon to make like free tiers for everyone. It forced me to put them on one euro and I don't know if it is possible to make them free. Please, if anyone knows, let me know how I can do that because I really don't want you to pay. Um, but as long as I don't know how to change that, there is a tier on Patreon. But don't go there yet, please, because there is no video. Um, if you want to watch full length reactions, it will be there, but um, I will need more time to set them up or to set up the Patreon. I will not link it yet. I will link it when it's ready. So please don't look for it because it's not there yet. I am looking into this whole new thing that I don't know nothing about yet. Um, so if I am set up, I will let you know. Okay, so enough of the talk. We are going straight into the second episode and I'm so excited because I know this show is so great and I am excited to find out more about the doctor and about all the stuff that he can do and about the adventures that those two are going to have. So let's... Oh no, just a second. Okay, here we go. 10,000 years in the future. Step outside, it's the year 12,005, the new Roman Empire. This is the year 5.5 slash apple slash 26, five billion years in your future. And this is the day. Hold on. This is the day the sun expands. This is a maximum hospitality mm. zone. The guests have disembarked. They're on their way any second no, now. that's me. I'm a guest. Look, I've got an invitation. <laughs> Look, there, you see? It's fine. You see? The doctor plus one. I'm the doctor. This is Rose Tyler. She's my plus one. Is that all right? Plus one? Well, obviously. I give you in return air from my lungs. How intimate. There's more where that came from. Cassandra O'Brien got Delta 17. Oh, no, don't stare. Oh. I know. Moisturize me, moisturize me. Oh. oh, no, I hate spiders. Sorry, am I allowed to be in here? You have to give us permission to talk. Um... You have permission? <laughs> I just sort of hitched a lift with this man. Didn't even think about it. Don't even know who he is. Now she's thinking about it. She doesn't even know him. Would the owner of the blue box in private gallery 15 please report to the steward's office in Oreo. <laughs> They're just so alien. The aliens are so alien. Well, you look at them, and they're alien. This is me. Yeah, and I'm here too because you brought me here. So just tell me. 
I want to know too. So please tell us. Hello? Mum? Oh, uh, what is it? What's wrong? What have I done now? Oh, this red top's falling to bits. You should get your money back. Go on. There must be some... Is there something wrong? No, I'm, I'm fine. Top of the world. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Five billion years ago. So... She's dead now. Five billion years later, my mum's dead. And your wife? Well, she's not my wife. Partner? No. Concubine? No. Prostitute? Whatever I am, it must be invisible. Do you mind? But it was right. I know where you're from. What did it say? I want to know. How sorry I am. This is reminding me of Resident it's Evil 8. A bit nippy. The factory of Heisenberg. Me out! Me out! Oh, come on. Hurry. Oh, come on. Hurry. I don't want to lose her. We just met her. A repeated me is just an idea. And that's all they are. An idea. Okay. The compensation would have been enormous. Five billion years and it still comes down to money. Do you think it's cheap looking like this? Flatness costs a fortune. This is I am so the last stupid. human. You can't. The heat's gonna vent through this place. I know. Jabe, you're made of wood. Then stop wasting time. Time, Lord. That's what I wanted to say. Just go then. Uh oh. Well, you're still standing there. Just move already. <laughs> Were well, you watching? Just move. Oh my god, this guy makes me so nervous. I'm sorry, but that seems impossible to do. Okay, then. This is action sad. Repair and watch me smile and cry and flutter and creak. And what? Creak. You're creaking. What? What's happening? I, I, I'm drying out. Oh, oh, sweet heavens. Moisturize me. Oh. Moisturize me. Where are my surgeons? My lovely boys. It's too hot. I am too young. Oh my god! That was gross! You think it'll last forever? People and cars and concrete. But it won't. For one day it's all gone. Even the sky. <clears throat> what about your people? I'm a Time Lord. I'm the last of the Time Lords. They're all gone. I'm the only survivor. I'm left traveling on my own because there's no one else. There's me. Come on then, Tightwad. Chips are on me. I've only got five billion years till the shops close. <laughs> okay, perfect. Again, then I can take this away. And wow. <laughs> okay. Just give me a minute. I have to recap all of this in my brain. My brain is like 
I don't know, it's not working right now. This episode was... Oh, I'm all out of words. <laughs> Just give me a second. Well, I should take notes. This is something that I thought about even last week. Um, I should take notes while um, watching the episode so I do remember what I want to say at the end of it. Um, but I didn't. I don't know why. Maybe I'm going to try it next time. Um, but I have so many thoughts right now. Everything is running through my head and I cannot even focus on one thing. Okay. We'll try and start um, at like the beginning, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's a good idea. Okay. At the beginning, um, Rose was asked if she wanted to go to the future or if she, uh, travel to the future or if she wanted to travel to some time in the past. She uh, didn't really know where to go um, because, well, I can imagine if someone w came to me, asked me the same question and I knew that it was real, I wouldn't know where to go either. I don't... I, if I'm thinking about it, maybe I would like to go to the past and see things that have already happened just to adjust to the, this kind of new thing that happened to me because I can't imagine like getting to know that something like this is real is enough for you to cope with. And then, like, a minute after that, while your head is still spinning around and you cannot focus on what you are thinking and, and everything, then I guess it's not really a good idea to travel to the future and see other things that you don't really know about. Because in the past, at least you have heard of the things that have happened if you go to a place of history or something and you can kind of relate to that and I think this would be necessary for me to ground me like I cannot imagine going to the future like they did and I don't know they went went 50 billion years or something to the future and the, they didn't even land on the planet because there was no planet to live anymore I, I mean in the beginning yes but in the end, there was no Earth anymore. Which, which brings me to the next question or to the next thing that I want to talk about. I was asking myself, if he knows that this is the, the history of the Earth, um, isn't it like everything that he does going back to the past, like saving the Titanic like we heard last time, isn't it kind of pointless to him when he knows that the Earth won't exist anymore in billions of years and everything will disappear no matter what? I don't know. I can't wrap my head around this. It's just way too big of a thing to think about. Yeah, but that was one thing I was thinking about. If he has all of this knowledge that it ends at the same point and all of humanity will die in the end. Does it even matter if he changes small or bigger things in the past? Or even in the future, like if he goes to the year like 3000 something or a time that doesn't already exist and he changes stuff? Maybe it's to prevent that the earth is destroyed before that point? And maybe that is the reason. Maybe it wouldn't even live that long. Five billion years or something. If he wouldn't like. Do something to prevent. The earth from dying. I don't know. This is really complicated. And um, the episode got to a level. Especially in the last ten minutes. Um, where. The. We went to, I had the feeling we went to another level. It was not like the first episode. It was something surreal. It was something disturbing. 
Well, it was kind of a story that could have destroyed the Earth. But this one was something else. Okay, sorry I had to look up a word that I wanted to use and um, to describe this episode. But this episode we went to another meta level. I hope this is how you say that word. Um, I'm sorry. I am having a really hard time to get my thoughts together on this episode. I want to say something, but the words just uh, don't form a clear thought. But what I wanted to say is that the show is going to a deeper level um, where we not only think about the problem that is in front of our eyes and we are trying to prevent um, somebody from dying, but we see where all of the story that we will probably um, see in the next episodes or seasons, where all of this is going to end. And that's a thought that is on another level, on another depth. And it shows that the show is even more complicated than I have thought at first. And I am, I am thinking that this is something that will continue. I don't think that that is it. I mean, we're season one, episode two, and already I am so confused about all of this complexity. Okay, let's talk about the creatures on this spaceship because, wow, the producers or the costume designers are so creative. When they entered the room one after the other, it, I was blown away. I think I didn't talk for like three minutes straight and I had all the, I had the same expression throughout the whole like entrance of those creatures. I was like, all of the time. <laughs> I think I didn't say a word. I don't know. I don't remember. Until that human, last human skinny thing did appear. Oh my god, that was so gross. Was even more gross than the spiders. And the spiders really had me freaked out. I was happy that the CGI again was not that good so that you could see they're fake. Um, otherwise, I would have been even more horrified about them. Um, yeah, but the skinny thing. Oh my god. That's so gross. Mm. Let's talk about our characters. Let's talk about Rose. Let's talk about Doctor Who. Um, about Rose. Um, like I said last episode, she um, would still have some kind of contact to her mother. I mean, it's her mother. Um, when she saw that the earth was destroyed and she was thinking about her mother, that she would be dead. Um, she had to call her mother, listen to her voice, hear her voice to feel a little bit better. I mean, she wasn't really good after that phone call either, but uh, that's because and that's why the doctor um, like teleported her to um, the time where she came from in the end, I guess. I think this will like be something that will continue throughout the whole show. That she will call her mother or even see her mother. I mean, her mother was asking or did she say something about coming home that night? I don't know. If she doesn't get home every night... Her mother would be, I mean, what's she gonna say? So is Rose like traveling through time every day and through night she's staying at home? I didn't quite catch that. I don't know how they will like do that, but she can obviously cannot travel around in through time and space like all of the time because her mother will realize that she's not at home sooner or later. I don't know. Um, but it's nice to know that she's still having contact with her. 
Um, we found out very much about Doctor Who in this episode. Oh, very much. Yeah. We found out that he comes from a planet um, where many of time travelers were living. Like, I always thought that he was the only one. But obviously he wasn't. I mean, he's now. But there was a whole planet of time travelers. And this begs a question if there was a whole planet of time travelers why didn't even one of them travel back in time like he for example doctor who and save them so they that they are still alive i mean he can go back in time and save the earth if he wants to why can't he go back in time and save his planet and all of his people must have been a sudden death because Otherwise, other time travelers would have prevented their death. But, I mean, they would have known that it's about to happen, that, are going, that they are going to die, right? Because they were time travelers, so they traveled in, uh, to the future and they have seen that they are going to die. So why didn't they prevent it? This is something that's like... I cannot wrap my mind around this. This is too much for me to think about. <laughs> and I hope we are going to get some answers. Maybe in the season one finale. I don't know. So that's it for this week. Um, I hope you had fun watching my reaction. I had fun watching the show. And I'm really looking forward to finding out more about that. Because oh my god. I can't stop thinking about this. I can't stop trying to find solutions from all of my questions. And... I hope we will get answers soon because otherwise my head will explode. Okay, have a great day. We'll see us next week. Till then, bye.